Um, Jim, uh, the racist card is completely played out. I, I, I could, so Jim wrote that the racist card is played out. Totally agree with you, man. A hundred percent. Not everything is racist and what the cops do to most people, they do to black people too. And then there's some sick twisted F's like the, in Rankin County, Mississippi, who literally did racist things to black guys and blacks are targeted more than white people, um, because they know they don't have as much money and they don't have as much backing, uh, to get a lawyer and fight those charges. Not everything is racist, though. The laws we live under are definitely racist, 100%. I do long lectures on it. I actually am rebuilding my wall uh, of con of constitutional law, of the, the, the history of institutional racism in our country, the laws that are built on racism, Terry versus Ohio, for example. So, you know, you're right. The, the, so just so you know, in 2021, when I was called a racist, um, at that time, the racist card wasn't played out. You could still cancel people by calling them a racist. Now in today's world, when someone calls you a racist, you kind of just laugh, you know, as <laughs> here's how racist I am. I rally up team DLZ, my team that I started to raise money to get Floyd Wallace out of jail. That's how racist I am. <laughs> Floyd knows Floyd's been here. Floyd stayed with me a couple of times. So just for a day, but he came over and stayed at my place for a day or two. So I, I know the man. I've met him. We sat down, talked to talk. We had heart to heart talks. So I know what he's about, what, at least what he's told me what he's about. And so far he has done exactly that. Exactly that. Uh, let me just say this one more time. If you're new to my channel, um, what I do is I sell a trifold. It's on my website, deletelaws.com. And the new trifold looks different than this one. This is the old trifold. But I was talking earlier about the 2002 case of the United States versus versus Bradley. Tomorrow, I get my, my glove box locked. I get a professional lock put on my glove box tomorrow. My glove box and my console tomorrow, I found a guy who's going to create a professional lock for me. But I was going over the 2002 case of Bradley versus United States. If your container is locked, then they can't search your car. So what I do is I use what, what, what my plan is so that when I get pulled over, but I get pulled over, I do it for different stuff. But when you get pulled over, um, what I would do if I was you, I would lock my glove box. I would lock my console. And then if they said, hey, I want to search your car, then I would I would actually say you can search my car and I would give them permission to search my car. And then I would immediately revoke consent using the 2018 case of United States versus Williams. And then as soon as I revoke consent, they may say, well, we have reasonable articulable suspicion and you're in a state that doesn't have medicinal or recreational marijuana. And they say, we smell marijuana and it's not supposed to be probable cause, but in your state, wherever that is, that doesn't sell medicinal or recreational marijuana, then they say they're going to search your car, but you've already given and revoked consent, but they say they have reasonable articulable suspicion. You say, okay, fine. So you're going to search my car against my permission. You're recording everything. If you have everything locked, then you don't have to open that glove box and they have to get a warrant. Because it held that there's no effective search consent when cops assert it's their independent right to engage in a search. So if I gave consent and then revoke consent, then I'm playing directly into the, to the defense of using United States versus Bradley 2002. Do you see what I'm saying? You have to use the logic of this. Because the exact holding is right there. There can be no effective search consent when cops assert it's their independent right to engage in a search. Now, everybody knows that a cop can just say he smells marijuana. So if you're in a state that doesn't sell medicinal or recreational marijuana and they ask you, can I search your car? Then I would say, sure, you can search my car. And then as soon as they started to search, I would revoke consent because the subject of a consensual search has control over the search parameters. He can restrict or terminate it entirely to revoke consent. You must make a clear statement, unambiguous position. I revoke the consent to search this vehicle and re Reserve all my rights in doing so. I do not consent to any searches or seizures. So when I give the cop consent to search the car, I may then immediately turn around and revoke consent. So, but then let's just say that he's a jackboot thug pig, JBTP, and he's going to search the car anyway and try to say that he smells marijuana. Well, okay, then he's going to do it anyway, right? Well, if you then have your compartments locked, then he would, he would need a warrant to 
to be able to search your car. And the exact holding that the that, that the Supreme Court said in United States versus Bradley is there can be no effective search consent when the cops assert it's their independent right to engage in a search. And this is a fact from the court. A closed container or compartment means a container whose contents are not exposed to view. So now I'm coupling up United States versus Williams to actually reserve my rights. When the cop says he's going to search my car, I use U.S. versus Williams. And I say, sure, you can search my car. As soon as he even touches the car, I then say, wait a minute, stop. I revoke consent right now. And then the jackboot thug pig says, well, I'm going to search it anyway. So sit back. So you go, okay, fine. I'm going to sit back. And he says, I need the keys to the glove box. You say, I'm not going to give them to you. He says, I'm going to arrest you. You say, I don't care. Arrest me. So he puts you under arrest and you go to jail. But then when you go to court, you're going to say United States versus Bradley. First U.S. versus Williams I have on camera that he asked me to search my car and then I revoked consent to search my car. He said he was going to do it anyway. My glove box and my console are locked. And so now he now enters into the U.S. versus Bradley that says that there can be no effective search consent. So he asked me to search the car. I said yes. And then I revoked consent. So there can be no effective search consent when cops assert it's their independent right to engage in the search anyway. So do you see by combining the two cases, I'm going to make it so that I first allowed him to search. I'm using my rights to offer my rights away. But then in the 2018 case of United States versus Williams, I can take those rights back by simply stating aloud, oh, I've changed my mind. I revoke consent. I reserve my rights. Now he has to stop searching. If he decides he's going to search anyway, the exact holding of the court is that there can be no effective search consent if you're just going to say you get to search my car no matter what. I'm following the letter of the law here. Literally the letter of the law that was decided in these two cases. So that's, and they're both Supreme Court cases. They are the final decision. That means that our Constitution is based on U.S. versus Williams and U.S. versus Bradley. These are the, this is the current Constitution right there. You're reading the actual current Constitution. Just consider it like that. Now, I say that, but then every 40 to 60 years, every, every about Terry versus Ohio could fall. But every 50 or 60 years when those old Supreme Court appointed personnel justices die, then the next Supreme Court comes in and overrules the bad holding. So U.S. versus Bradley could be the Constitution today. In 30, 40, 50, 60 years, the new Supreme Court of appointed oligarchs may say, no, nah, they got it wrong. They're trying to overturn Matt versus Ohio right now. Everybody knows about Clarence Thomas. You've heard about Clarence Thomas, right? Clarence versus Clarence Thomas wants to wipe away the exclusionary rule, the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine that we talk about on this channel all the time. He wants to wipe that away, that any evidence that the cops find, whether they got it illegally or not, is fine. That's what Clarence Thomas, he wants to wipe away Matt versus Ohio 1961, which is where fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine comes from that says that if I give consent, then revoke consent, and he's going to search my car anyway, and he's getting my lock glove boxes, then anything he finds would be fruit of the poisonous tree because he broke the law. Clarence Thomas wants to do away with that. You talking to the cop and saying, hey, you know, uh, I don't have to open my glove box because United States versus Bradley is one thing. You having the trifold on you and showing the cop and showing the cop United States versus Williams that I revoke consent and I have the right to do it. That's what makes it so it goes around their qualified immunity. Once they're aware of your rights and they break them anyway, you are now absent of qualified immunity. You can get around it that way. You've informed them. You've told them. You have, you're filming it. I'm filming this. I'm showing the cop. United States versus Williams says, I can revoke consent. I've done so. Stop searching my car. And they say, we're going to search your car anyway. And you say, officer, I'm informing you now. You're working outside of qualified immunity. I'm showing you the case law. You have a smartphone. Look it up. Or face my lawsuit. And I will sue. It's, I will sue. Nice to see the Facebook contingency in here tonight. Good to see you guys from Facebook. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. All right, listen, I better get the flock out of here. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Everybody, God bless you guys. Thank you for the donations. So many of you guys donated tonight. So many new faces and so many old faces uh, who are Team DLZ. Welcome to Team DLZ, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys on 
the next one. Later, Gators. <laughs>